used to call it contact sound, but I decided to change the name. <laughs> I called up to the Rulgos, for those of you who are familiar with her, the Norwegian lady who uh, published a book on talking terms with dogs. So I said to her, uh, Tudit, you know, contact sound is not a good name because a lot of people are confusing it with the old fashioned dog training of contact, meaning in dog training, it's believed that contact means looking into the eyes very often. So, uh, although in general, contact does not mean looking into someone's eyes necessarily, uh, but in dog training, it seems that a lot of, of people understand it that way. So I don't want to make any confusions about this. That's why I'm trying to remind myself that I'm actually changing the name to attention sound because that's what it is. Attention sound, I want to say sound because it's better to use a sound than a word. Why? Because a word, first of all, we humans we are not very inventive i'm sorry to say we're not the best you know inventors when it comes to to these kind of things in other other areas we are <laughs> of course but um first of all a lot of people would use their dog's name and the dog's name is kind of used up if you can say it in that way meaning that we always say we say it a lot so it doesn't have any meaning after a while also, the great thing with the sound is that it's neutral. It's not colored by our um, mood or if you're stressed or something. So it's a new, neutral thing. Uh, you can use whatever sound is good for you, but I really, of course, you can use a word. You can, definitely. But I really recommend you use a sound because it's easier. Um, also, you can use several sounds. I mean, you should stick to your sound. <laughs> um, but if you're several people in the family, you can use different sounds. However, the dog has to learn the meaning of the sound of from each person if it's different sounds. Okay. So the sound I use, now I'm looking around me because I have three dogs who just came home from a walk. And they're all sleeping, so I don't really want to wake them up. But they are so used to this sound. And it goes like this. It's very easy. You know, it's like um, when you're doing horse riding, you make these sounds as well. Um, for me, it's an easy way of making a sound. So that's why I chose it as my sound. Okay, and that sound, very it's very basic. It just means, can I get your attention? And by getting someone's attention, they do stop whatever they're doing, or at least they would turn their heads and look at you in your direction. And this is important for me to say. This is the only thing your dog needs to do, to look in your direction. No, it's really not necessary uh, to have eye contact with your dog at all. And it takes, I would say, minutes to teach this sound, the clicking sound, the attention sound. Because you start at home, when you, when you teach a dog something, they have to um, they have to know the meaning of it. So if you can go around clicking or doing all kinds of sounds or, or words and your dog will not understand what you mean by it, you have to tell your dog, teach your dog, what does this sound or word means? What do you want me to do when I hear this sound? So what you do, what you can do is very easily when you're at home, this is important, you start in a place where there is um, not enough, no, sorry, not not a lot of disturbances, yeah? So it ha you have to make it easy for yourself and your dog. So <clears throat> if you have some nice treats 
uh, if you're making dinner and you have some leftovers, some chicken or whatever it is, uh, or you, you can just use normal treats as well, of course. You don't have to use treats, though. You can use, you know, uh, cuddling, petting your dog, or just talking to your dog. But obviously, if your dog loves treats or chicken, it, you know, goes pretty fast to teach your dog that when you do the clicking sound or whatever sound you want to do, that means one treat. So let's take the example of the treats now. So you're at home in your kitchen, maybe, maybe not making dinner in the kitchen because that will also teach your dog to stay around you while you're making food in case you're making the clicking sound because dogs need by association. <laughs> so I would not start in the kitchen. I would start in a different room. And then you do the sound. Your dog, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me start all over again. When your dog is looking in your direction, you give your dog a treat. That's the first thing you do. And then the dog is like, wow, what happened now? So of course they're going to look in your direction again. And then you give another treat. One clicking sound is one treat. Yeah. First, you don't even have to do the sound. You do this two or three times. You only do it twice. Your dog knows that if I look at you again, then I will get another treat. So then you can start adding the sound. Yeah. So you have to make the connection for the dog. One sound or the sound means one treat. When you're outside, how we teach it outside, um, when we do like uh, some activities with dogs, when there's a lot of dogs around, uh, you can also start teaching it there. You need to have big space between the dogs. So you, again, make it easy for your dog to, to learn. Yeah. So as little disturbance, disturbances as possible. Then one sound, one treat. Yeah. And then you can start walking backwards. You walk slowly, but now you have to multitask. You have to do two things at the same time, and that's difficult for us humans. So while you are walking, slowly walking um, backwards, you do the clicking sound, one treat. Clicking sound, one treat. I can bet you your dog will follow you. And then, of course, when you make it more difficult, you turn around and walk the right way, straight forward. You have your dog next to you. It doesn't have to be like, like obedience next to you, but in your you know, area. I presume that you, that you use a long lead. We recommend at least three meters leads when you, when you walk your dog. So now when your dog starts walking a little bit to the left, but you, your intention is to go straight ahead. Before the lead is tight, you do the clicking sound. And guess what? Your dog will look at you and he will come and get the treat. Yeah. And this you apply in different environments. At your, You start at home. You go outside of your own home, maybe on the terrace, maybe in your garden, if you have a garden, on the streets. When you're walking your dog in the evening, make it very easy for him. And I tell you, it takes one evening to teach your dog this clicking sound. Okay. But don't, um, this is what a lot of people do. It takes a little, you know, a few repetitions for your dog to understand the clicking sound. So don't click yourself dry in your mouth going, you know, to get your the dog's attention. Yeah. So if your dog doesn't hear you or doesn't look in your direction, then no treat, then nothing happened. Then you wait a little bit. You again, you want to make it easy for your dog to learn this. So when your dog, maybe when your dog is actually looking at you, you do the sound. I do. This is the first thing I do with all dogs that I have taken into my home. I have taken. Uh, quite a few, well, 
I've got puppies. <laughs> and then I also have had quite a few uh, dogs that has been rehomed to me. And they have been in all different ages from, well, eight weeks up till, what's the oldest dog I took off? Nine years old, nine years old when he came to me. So this is as easy to learn for a puppy as for, for a senior dog, really. The beauty with this sound is that it means, can I get your attention? And then you let your dog know what you want from me, <laughs> what you want from him or her. So uh, a very good example and a common example is that when you are walking your dog and you don't want him to pull on the lead or you don't want him to start running after a cat uh, or if you're just crossing the street, you do the clicking sound and then depending on what you want your dog to do, if you're out walking your dog, then you, can, you don't even have to tell your dog. Your dog is already looking at you and then when you turn your body, your dog will follow you. Yeah? Don't stress with this. Just walk slowly, walk normal, and just do this. I'm telling you, it's really not complicated. I hope I'm trying, I'm explaining this in a good way. <clears throat> so I use it a lot when I'm out walking. And now, when soon there will be uh, here where I live, we're going to have snow and ice and I live like so I have to walk downhill or uphill. Obviously, I have to go downhill again if I go uphill. And I have three dogs and Wilma the Basset, she's quite strong. And if she smells something, there's no chance in heaven that I am able to be on my both feet when there's ice on the road. So when it's really icy and slippery on the road, I, you know, I barely <laughs> have to find something to hold on myself. And then I can't allow them to, to even pu pull a little bit, which would be normal. I don't, you know, just a little bit of pulling. It's, it's not, uh, it's not something uh, weird or strange or, or anything, but I just can't let that happen. So then I always watch her when she starts walking a little bit faster, when I can see that, ah, oh, she smelled something, I do the clicking sound. And then she stops and she looks at me and I go, great, you know, hold on, don't walk so fast. And then she tries to keep up with me because then I'm really, really slow um, walking on slippery roads downhill. And then if she starts, you know, being a bit in a hurry again, I will do the contact sound again. And that's how it goes in the winter. I can use the contact sound a lot. Um, however, the good thing about that is that I always train her. They will never forget the clicking sound because I use it all the time. I use it to get the attention of my dogs when they go into my car. When we go somewhere, um, my dogs jump into the car. And then Wilma, the Bassett again, uh, she's quite a character, actually. Sometimes she gets like, you know, I want to look around before I walk into your car, before I go into the car. And I let her look around for a little bit. But then if she's just standing there, you know, I say, hey, let's, you know, go into the car and get home. So then to get her attention, I do the clicking sound. When I want my dogs to stop something, you want to prevent your dog from doing something. For example, go to uh, chew on something that you don't want your dog to chew on or to run towards someone to jump on them when they're approaching you. You need to stop that behavior before they do it. This is actually the most difficult part for us humans we need to observe our dogs. We need to constantly observe them. And we have to be, again, we have to, to be really good at observing our dog's body language because that will tell you everything. That will tell you everything that your dog has in mind the next couple of minutes. So when my dog is thinking about, again, let me, I'm sorry about this, Wilma. <laughs> Uh, I'll use her as an example. As I said, she's quite a character. She has a thing of wanting to sleep on top 
of my Italian Greyhound. And that's not a good idea. He is very tiny and she's quite a lot bigger. So when she's walking over to where he is sleeping, this is inside the house. She's not running around like a mad dog. <laughs> Or uh, she's walking, and then I can see her walking towards the bed or the place where the other dog is sleeping. I don't want her to climb on top of him in that bed, so I will stop her behavior by doing the contact sound. And then when she stops and look at me or in my direction, again, no eye contact is necessary, I'll just let her know that, hey, you're not going over to that bed. Let him sleep, you know, peacefully by himself. Um, and I redirect her. I tell her something else to do, like come here. And then I would maybe even show her where to go <laughs> and not to go into that bed. You need to tell your dog what, what to do instead. This is important because if you just said, this is like we, we used to say no. We say no to your dog or to our dogs no 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 but then what what to do yes you're saying no i don't know really know what it means i know i've heard it a lot maybe it's even my name <laughs> um but what do you want me to do instead i want to chew on this shoe or this very nice piece of furniture um i don't know what you want me to do instead so if your dog is chewing on something or about to chew if you have a puppy that is about to go and chew on something you go uh, to your puppy with something else not this is a very bad example don't give her the remote control but let's say she has the remote control your dog and then you you take a bone or you know a toy like this and you you do the clicking sound and then you present her with something else to chew on this is my point is this clear? Did I explain this in a good way? Do you understand what I mean by clicking sound? And that really it's a lifesaver. It's not not a lifesaver. It's it's just something I use every day, all the time. Not all the time, but in 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 when I want my dogs to listen to me. And for me, I have three dogs now. I used to have eight dogs. Um, now I have three and um, the clicking sound is the same sound for each dog. If I'm out walking my dogs or if they are in the garden, three dogs in the garden, I will, uh, if I only want the attention from one dog, I will tell the dog's name. Okay, I can tell you right away that it's not working, obviously, when the dog is too far away. It's not a recall sound if your dog is far away. Yeah. It's not something that your dog will listen to or even care to listen to if they're busy playing with other dogs, yeah, or having a great time. Or if your dog is already um, uh, reacting on a dog when you're passing a dog, if you have a problem with your dog being reactive on leash, if your dog is already standing on two legs going, ah, that, you know, that doesn't help. The, the contact sound. It's too late. You need to do that. Sorry, not the contact, but the uh, attention sound. You need to do that before your dog starts barking or reacting. And it's good because it actually teaches you to be ahead of the situation as well, which is key when it comes to training a dog. Very specific. But then again, um, I have not not much experience with deaf dogs, okay? But then, uh, obviously, you ca cannot click or make a sound if your dog does not see you. So it's a whole different way of teaching your dog uh, then. Uh, it has to see you, and then you make uh, movements instead, signs, like sign language. But um, the challenge is that your dog has to see you when you do that. We need to be more aware of what we are actually doing and saying and how we behave. And when we get more, give more attention and are more aware of what, how we behave and what we say and what we do, um, I think it becomes 
very obvious to most of us that uh, we have been ru running around saying no, no, no to a dog. I, I don't even say no. I say this no, 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 no. I said many times. Um, try, try one day to count how many times you actually say no or your dog's name just to test yourself because it's quite you know a few times and the thing is with no it is like the attention sound we are actually I say something after that so it becomes no don't do that no come here no sit no stay no don't eat no don't chew no don't jump so it's we're just adding more words you know same thing with the name dogs can learn their whole life and this is something that I ask quite frequently if dogs can still learn when they're adults or getting older. Funny enough, because I think it's funny, because if your dog is 10 or 12 or 14, 15 years old, and he starts doing something like chasing cars or barking at the neighbor or starting to change his behavior, that means that they have learned something because they changed the behavior. They've learned something. So, of course, they can learn their whole life, just like us. What is important is that don't, like all other training, don't expect your dog to know this sound when you go to a new place until you, you have really taught him well. You know, all dogs, they need to learn their behavior or what they have to do, recall, uh, walking nice on leash, whatever. They have to learn in different environments. So don't expect, your dog can be perfect at understanding and, and, uh, and responding when you do the clicking sound at home, or even where you train your dogs with other dogs if you go to a course or any activity. But then if you go to a new place again, um, and there are other uh, dogs or people in the environment, don't expect your dog to know it all immediately. They have to be taught. Senior dogs deserve, they deserve to learn something new because dogs love to learn just like us. They like to be uh, with us and do exciting uh, interesting, funny things with us. So, uh, really, senior dogs, they, they deserve to learn something new and they deserve to use their nose and to experience new things. I, I have two senior dogs. I would consider at least, uh, well, the golden retriever is 11, but the other one is 14. And I, I especially make sure that we go to new places with him because we know it's the same thing with humans. If we use our brains, if you are active up here, we might be able to, um, well, keep our brain healthy and, and functioning better for longer when we're using it. We just have to use it. Okay. Well, that was, that was it from today. Contact, sorry, I said it again. Attention sound. I've been using contact sound for 12 years, 14 years, so it's difficult for me to, no longer, almost 20 years now. Uh, it's difficult to change the name of my attention sound. Okay, so teach your dog the attention sound and please, you know, lower your shoulders and don't stress when you do this. Never stress, be calm, <laughs> calm, cool and collected when you are with your dog, because they are usually calm, cool, and collected. And guess what? If they're not cool, calm, and collected, or whatever uh, it is, then if you are, they will get calmer. But if your dog is not very calm and you start, you know, stressing yourself up, then you have two crazy, um, well, crazy owner, crazy dog. <laughs> okay. I'm going to stop now because I see that I can just talk about anything the whole night. So enjoy being with your dog and um, stay safe in these times. 
Bye.